Uh, welcome back to the East Circuit. I'm Mike Itai, aka Mika. Nasaizen me join on our guest DJ, goes by the name of DJ Nesh K. Huh? I thought my name was creative. Yeah, yours, yours, I think we should exchange, yeah? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, of course, uh, Pia Baden me join on a magic mic. As promised, I'm a Kuja, I'm a take time away from his busy, busy schedule. <laughs> but 2019, I'm going to be busy. Are we lying busy, or not? I'm going to be busy, man. I'm on a high note. Yeah, man. But that's awesome. That's awesome. That's yeah, man. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Karibu. I like Some to say we're the guests. I'm and, happy uh, to be here. I like to say we're the guests. So no, actually, this is my attachment here at KBC. Yeah? Uh. After after college. Uh. Yeah. Well, it's been a while. Then though. what happened? Oh, man. You know, I decided to pursue music. Uh, yeah. So your first love was journalism. Yeah, I was always in the newsroom, uh -huh. preparing news for. Others. So we would have seen a magic mind like, and uh, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not <laughs> Swahili. Hey, Swahili <laughs> tricky. <laughs> Definitely not Swahili. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that's awesome though. Yeah, man. Uh, remember, fun. DJ Nesh Bado uh, is is just filling in for DJ Talk. So do the necessary. To my request, Zako Zote on our social media platforms. That's on Y254 and the East Circuit and Azingo J app. OVP? Safi Kabisa. Magic Mike. Uh, yes. Huh. That's an interesting fun fact. Uh -huh. Journalism Kwanzaa. Yeah. Then Ukatana Nayo after attachment. Yeah. Then uh, sound engineering. Yes. Yeah, Lingile Api. I think the whole time nilikuwa even before i was always interested in music mm. so immediate when even during my college life i um like i didn't have friends in college because i was the guy who after college i was in the studio just chilling and so you know because i was interested in music i had recorded a few songs but, but you do yeah. so in the process yeah. i learned how to produce just from watching the producer you know do his thing uh, i learned how to what produce is this uh, uh who's your mentor? a friend of mine is called tony had a studio in Gedurai. Okay. Yeah, it's called Hood Stuff. Hood Stuff. So guys from Gedurai know what I'm talking about. So is Hood Stuff still there? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Uh. Yeah, guys grew into different different, you know, different uh, things. things, guys. Yeah. When so let me get deeper. I wanna talk. But you started uh, your music career around uh, 2011. Yeah. Uh. Around 2011. 2011 was when I, I went back to school, I think, or I was, I was still in school. Mm. So that's that's when I did sound engineering. And I did that just to up my game because I don't think anyone can teach you. Yeah, I don't mm. think anyone can teach you production, production per se. Mm. I think that's a talent. But I did sound engineering because I wanted to up the quality of my production, which I think uh, is super important. Can you important. let us know what that means? Because I know there are some aspiring producers back at home as well. Yeah. There's, a, there's another producer. Uh, he goes by the name of Swiss Beats. I, I yeah. believe you're <laughs> familiar with them. Yes. Uh, he likes to say there are two types of producers. Yeah. Actually, there's a beat creator and there's yeah. a producer. Yes. Because the producer can create the beat and mix and master. Yeah. So you're the full package. You're the producer. Yes. Uh, d do you need the to go to school for sound engineering so that you become the producer and not just a beat creator? No, a producer is basically a creative. You don't need to go to the to the studio. Like professionally, yeah. a producer is the guy who puts things together. Mm. So it's like it's like it's the same concept with uh, like a TV producer. It might not necessarily be there, you know, uh, but is switching there in between. Things? Yeah, but he's the one directing and saying, okay, put this here, put this there. Yeah. So it's like Puff Daddy is a producer. So that's what he does. He says, uh, take this musician, give them this song. Mm. Sing it like this. We're going to package it like this, mm. you know? And then there's the beat maker, the guy who makes beats. So, and then there's an engineer. So normally those are two, three completely different people. Mm. So the engineer is the technical guy. So he's you're the, the technical guy. guy. Yeah, he's the guy setting up for the, for the session, yeah. the guy doing the mixing and mastering and, and just controlling quality. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So even this foreign, it's, a, it's a fun <laughs> thing because even all these foreign beat makers we know, you know, like when we know the Lex Lugas mm. and the Swiss Beats yeah. and the Kanye West, the all these dope, yeah, yeah. All these dope beat makers slash producers, yeah. they don't necessarily do their own engineering. They mm. have an engineer in the studio. They just so they are put creatives. it together, then yeah. they leave the mixing and yeah. mastering to everyone else. Yes. Do you but think Kenya that's why there. maybe uh, they're saying uh, there's some lacking in, qu in quality in uh, African music? Because we're not delegating the way we should, the way the producers you just mentioned are. Yeah, I think so. I People think people want to do everything themselves and take yes. all the credit. I think it's a contributing factor, but you have to f you have to um, appreciate that we are a growing industry. Yeah. And even right now, I know some guys locally 
who don't have their like their beat makers mix and master their projects. Mm. So we are growing. There are guys who like I have mixed and mastered for a few guys who I haven't produced for. Mm. There are guys who even send their music uh, like uh, abroad mm. for mixing and mastering. Yeah. So you Just know to I get think that yeah, quality. Yeah. So yeah. you know we are growing. We are growing industry. I think uh, slowly by slowly guys are getting to 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 recognize the the importance of certain processes and specialize. Yeah, because we are we are setting ourselves up to really compete on an international level. Mm. So, you know, if you are setting ourselves up for that, then we have to be as professional as we can. Uh, talking about international, there's an, uh, a, a guy, yeah? Uh, goes by the name of Calligraph Jones, Squeezing <laughs> Energy, Mr. International. Yeah. You've worked with him before. You've uh, yes. engineered some songs for him, yeah? Yeah, uh, produced as well. And produced as well. Collabo, no, no, come on, Nezafanya? No. No. No, I actually knew Kali back in the day before. <laughs> Ta- before that snow came way too quickly. Ended, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why is that? I I would do a collab. We've never we've never we've never spoken about it. We've known each other for long. I actually knew him through his older brother. Mm. Because uh, his older brother was a dope hip hop head back in the day, mm. Span One. He's still a dope hip hop head though. Mm. So uh, I don't know, man. Let's see what the future holds. We we've mm. never talked about it. But uh, if I may ask, yeah. your gospel, gospel. Yes. You're not like somewhere in between no, 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 trying no. to wade in the water. <laughs> it's a clear line. A clear so, line. Yeah. So uh, do you think there can be like an opportunity for you to do a collab with a secular artist? I have. Like. Uh-huh. I have a song with Madrax, uh-huh. but uh, me and him agreed we would never release it. Why? Just, just because of the... Because here's how we look at it. Um, and I think a lot of people would, would, would share our thoughts. It's a, like it's a dope song and it's an honest song, but I think releasing it and pushing it would seem like we are chasing the controversy and the numbers. Looking for the clout. Yeah. But, you know, like in order, if we ever release the song, it would probably just be featured on the album mm. so that it can have the intended effect because the intended effect is what it talks about. So if someone would listen to it just as an album track, mm. then they wouldn't overthink it. It wouldn't be um, overrun by the hype and the controversy. Like we would take the controversy mm. o- out of the song mm. by not releasing it, by just having it on the album. And if someone found it online, you know, cool but we didn't but yeah, came zuri. yeah we didn't push it <laughs> uh. yeah Do you so think i would uh, speaking as an artist and a producer yeah that i think in in uh, kenya yes that distinction uh gospel gospel secular secular yeah. they're not comfortable yeah. because i think uh, someone like uh, willie paul yes has been trying to is not really trying to become secular it's yeah. just singing about love Yes. You can't say Christians don't love each other. We love each other. So yeah. uh, what do you think uh, can happen so that that distinction is not that clear as in that l- that line I think it's a bit too thick for now. Yes. It's um I think guys I think the issue that we have is that guys are too harsh mm. without considering all the facts. Cuz if you say gospel like um the one gospel we know is the word of God. Everything we sing about is inspired and if you look at the word of god in, in its entirety it addresses so many things it addresses love it addresses betrayal it addresses money mm. you know so if i were like even your proper church does not always talk about salvation mm. it it addresses so many things like there are guys out there who preach about uh, biblical principles on finances because mm. the bible addresses that mm. if you're doing your marriage counseling and talking about love holistically mm. then the teachings are coming from the bible so of if course. you yeah if you look at that i think the thing that guys just need to accept is that when you say gospel and and this is our biggest problem is that we have to stop limiting it otherwise the more we continue to limit it the lesser effect it has on our daily lives mm. because gospel to me and what it actually is is daily living because i would think yeah. it's actually like freedom yeah yes because on a patua, it's not really rules and guidelines it's just a way of life a guide, uh, guide. So yeah it's not that's all awesome. rules passage, we're about to take you guide. guys to church on the east yeah. side VP. Yeah. praise jesus <laughs> praise <laughs> jesus <laughs> ladies and gentlemen can i get an amen 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 brother amen. Uh, <laughs> now there's the coke studio thing yeah. before we get into the new track uh, tuna featuring dj ruff yeah
uh, Cook Studio, yes. the invite when you got it, how did it feel to be part of it? It was dope, man. Uh. You know, we, it, it had been a dream of mine since, um, let me be honest, since I think last year. Because mm -hmm. I was there before engineering for Mad Trucks and Mad Trucks was producing. Mm. Um, you know, so I think after that, the, the dream just, you know, it just got stuck in, in the head. So like you, yo, you envisioned this yourself is, uh, there. Yeah. Because I think for, I think for Africa, there are very few platforms that get you on that level. Mm. If you're talking about Africa, I think Cox Studio is one of the big ones mm. because it, it, it's very inclusive. Mm. You know, and the exposure is amazing. The kind of people you get to work with are amazing. They're on a different level. So, you know, it was a really exciting uh, phone call to... Mm. Yeah. So far, who, who, who have you worked with within Cox Studio? I've uh, produced two projects. For uh, One is a collab between Calligraph and Root Boy from P-Square. And the other one is a collab between Moji Shot Baba and Bisrat from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so far, w w what hints can you give us? Is it fire? Or is it fire? Fire? Hey, yo, you know how we do it. Here's where my my head gets big, yo. Yeah, you know how we do it. You know, we, we don't know anything else other no, than fire. No, actually, you're supposed hits. to add an accent now. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know. Uh. Find you some pigeon. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know, man. I hope people love what we did. Mm. Um, very different. Uh, the, the two tracks are completely different. Mm. Uh, so you know. That's one of the things I try to do as a producer. I don't want to be the producer that, like, Sounds if you hear it's Magic same. Mike, you already know. It's, ma it's a yeah, magic. Yeah, regardless of the artist, mm. like, you already know what the sound is going to be. Mana. And so I think this is very, it's going to be very unpredictable. I like, like that. I like that you did. said that. Yeah. A lot of producers, that's why I'm sometimes I'm afraid to ask that because... Yeah. Let's just be honest, though. Most African producers, they stick to a certain they sound. They sound the same, yeah. At a, I was talking to my producer earlier. Piani hip hop, not yeah. piani maju, like yeah. murder beats. I know a murder beat, murder beat track by the 808. Yes. And I think that's unfortunate. People need it to is. like expand, People evolve, evolve. I think I, I think like the word, yeah. the only way you guarantee longevity is if you're willing to evolve. Mm. That's the that's the only way. Otherwise, you'll become the guy who was really big at some point. And then you're and no then longer some there. other you guys come with some new sound and some new vibe, and you become irrelevant. And you become extinct. You can't compete yeah. because you are not ready to compete. Yeah, you have to be. You have to keep evolving. It's tough, but you have to find a, a way. In terms of uh, production, now, yeah. How I, uh, what's the plan for 2019 in terms of production? Uh, I don't know, man. Do more music. Uh, push new sound more. I know in Kenya it's it's really hard to push new sound, mm. <laughs> right? Because even the song we played earlier, Menitosha, it's like it, it took a while. Quite a type, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has everything. It has quite it has jazz, it's Afro pop. Yeah, but it took a while for guys to to catch up, yeah, to get the sound. But once they did, it once was they like, did, they yeah. yeah. So you know, sometimes it can be a bit discouraging when you're trying to push the envelope and and contribute to the evolution of the Kenyan sound. But you know, so I think that's what I'm 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 going to do more. Sometimes that hurts the business, but you know, I think we need guys who are willing to push the industry forward. Mm. So that even when like even when guys are having conversations like play KE music and whatever, it's like it's guys don't know. But listen, man, there's there are some guys in the industry who are really pushing the envelope and they're doing some amazing job work. Mm. So, you know, I, I wanna be part of that contribution. So I think this year the main goal is to just push the envelope as much as I can. Mm. Yeah. Nazita kwazi na chuna. Kabisa. See what you did there. <laughs> DJ Ruff. <laughs> I, I think I followed DJ Ruff on Instagram. That's when yeah. I was first acquainted to that song and I was yes. like, oh, this is going to be a banger. Yeah, you think so? It is a banger, isn't man, it? Thanks, it's, man. It's an awesome song, Chuna. Let's yeah. talk about it for a minute. Yeah. Uh, the collaboration between you and DJ Ruff. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about? Uh, so Rafa and I have been friends for a while, and I feel like that's always important. Mm. Uh, everyone I've done a collab with, we've always been friends before. And I, just, it, I think it just makes the process easier. I told Raf Kitambo, like, yo, there's a jam, mm. and like, yo, you're going to come on it, and I don't want you to rap. I want you to hype it. I want you to be like the like old school MC, what the old school mm. MCs did. mind for a while and Ralph was just the perfect fit um just because of who he is and the kind of music he and the does he can hype yeah and then yeah. he can hype the jam and because he's just he's a he's a true guy yeah. you know so 
um, and I know he's Christian stand because we serve in the same church, so that also makes it a bit easier. Yeah, and it's just so like in terms of like co co uh, working with people. Yes, uh, the Christianity part, the Christianity part is important to you. It's extremely important. Yeah, because I feel like. I feel like if if I work with someone and which is like it's always limiting is they have to we have to have the same mindset in mm. terms of why are we doing this music how are we going to push it mm. we're not doing it for the numbers so it's music with a purpose it's yeah. not just to create for the sake of creating y yes and it it has to be people who are also you know they also want to push the envelope and do amazing music it has to have content like there are some aspects of the music that we cannot compromise on Mm. the quality the envelope and, and the, the content message. those three we cannot compromise on and we cannot get carried away by hype you know if mm. we decide this is the direction then we have to stick to that direction and the purpose has to be clear because mm. music is a really powerful tool and i think we mess up society when we misuse it mm. because music is super it influential generations. Yeah. and people look at and and the guys who listen to our music especially the youngins they don't only they're not only fans of the music they're fans of the people as well mm. so they look at what we do so you know character is also a big deal so you know having someone who is is not a borderline christian like someone you're sure about their stand i think it helps the process and it gives confidence i think uh, I, I like the conversations i've had today because even yeah. with kerji the don i was having an interview with him earlier yeah he was telling me for him to work with anyone or sign him to his label yes first and foremost it's the character it has he's to, going yeah. to look at the character it's not just about the music yeah it's about the friendship that you can the bond that you can build yeah. i think yours is through faith him is I, I, I'm, we'll get deeper into that later yeah. but I like these conversations that I'm having today I think yeah. you're the real OGs these other yeah, guys man. they're not even trying to mentor OG, the youngins OG I made it <laughs> <laughs> no I for made real. it I will be yeah. honest for a minute yeah. these other guys Ness Ness yeah. Mukwili so yes, yeah. they're not really t telling these young guys yeah. get yourself right then go back to the music and get this bug yes and uh, something interesting you know how they used to do it back in the day with the with the with the record labels mm. it's like when someone got signed there used to be an artist development process mm. you didn't get signed and then it was straight into the studio and some guys even used to complain that it's taking too long like you got signed two years ago mm. but you haven't put music out but even like through that whole time it was always to prepare yeah you. it was always to prepare and there's some, something that i learned from mad tracks as well because mad tracks would sign an artist and tell them listen you know you can come to the studio we hang out you we don't you don't we don't have to be making music we cannot only be hanging out when we are making music mm. just come let's chill you know let's know each other let's let's figure out how you're doing figure out how i'm doing like it has to be more than just about the music and i think that um you know that aspect of the relationship uh it creates a, a nice environment to make really good music because mm. music is very much re and you know it, like music is the relationship influences the music a lot mm. and so what like let's say when uh, an artist comes to the studio and I'm producing for them what I what stands in place of the relationship is the character you know sometimes an artist will come through and their attitude will just put you off mm. on the first day you can never make amazing music with someone whose attitude is off because you'll always be because the first impression was uh, yeah there's something you'll always, about you'll always have friction and you yeah. can't make music in such an environment so character is key so all these even all these youngins who want to make it like we were all there we were youngins we wanted to make it we knew nothing about the industry but character is a big deal because it opened a lot of doors for us mm. yeah awesome 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 yeah man what on is a kupatapi on social media social media instagram at uh, magic.mike on facebook at ma uh, it's just magic mike and it's magic with a j mm. yeah. Safi. Uh. so yeah <laughs> m-a-j-i-c m-a-j-i-c people mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so uh, we wish you all the best thanks man i uh, thank you for coming through thanks for having me and actually it was like uh, more of an inspirational talk than an interview which i hope guys is got inspired man love because this is an yeah. edutainment show yes we are teaching some kids out edutainment. there edutainment Mm. You said edutainment. 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 It's, a, it's oh. a mixture of education and entertainment. Not an actual <laughs> word. Speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of which, 
we had a topic earlier on. Yeah. It's actually the topic of the day. We, yes. we have that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we I'm trying to look to at the preview <laughs> for hints. <laughs> Nothing is We shit. were asking this, yeah? If yeah. you were to go back to high school, yes. like Kesho, <laughs> Buddha, unfortunately, ni topic gani ama rather subject gani unazesema? Ichujwe. Ichujwe? From Holy mathematics cow. to English. Just all one? Those. <laughs> Pick as many as you want to. Uh, or the ones I did. Which one now? I think geography. Why geography? Mm. I don't know why I'd spend a whole month studying rocks. Mm. It's just dumb. <laughs> and that was like one of the toughest because you have to cram names, metamorphic. I remember uh, that. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's so dumb, oh. man. Soil. Yeah, <laughs> which is even worse like, than I don't even want to be a farmer. Even if I'm a farmer, like, I don't need to know rocks. That was I think geography up, is probably one of the most irrelevant. I, that part. I think there are I think some just, aspects of it that are dope, uh, but come on, man, majority of it is. You can it, cover it, that in university. You know, you know yes. when uh, people are in the army, they get PTSD. I, I just got flashbacks right now. <laughs> I feel yeah. traumatized. Yeah. Remember, <laughs> remember yeah. the types of rocks? The, the, the practicals that you have to go and look for rocks. Yeah. Camp, yeah and do and then put them and then name this. them and then like you why why yeah, are you yeah, doing yeah. this to us <laughs> like I, I was thinking chemistry I'm, I'm, I'm like no chemistry we actually need chemistry you really need physics like even the even physics for me was super irrelevant because mm. the last topic back in my syllabus mm. it was waves and waves is the basis of sound you know, you so know my producer studying, is telling me yeah. uh, that uh, what Okujenga buildings, like uh, the architects, the contractors. They use stones. They use stones. But they probably don't know what stone <laughs> that is. They probably don't know. What I don't know. Any Mawaya 9. <laughs> you know, what, like the big stone <laughs> Mawaya 9. Like, mm. like, yeah, they probably don't know I the type of stone. And all that and yeah. the rest of Majina, they only know I, stones so. come from quarries. Mm. But probably that, like, if you ask, so All which, is, so uh, which uh, type of stone is the best the to build my house? Uh, I'm like, bro, uh, I think uh, that's the best they would do for you. But uh, <laughs> so, so white. Yeah, yeah, white. Yeah, white. Yeah, decoration. But I've had so much fun. Thank you so much for coming through. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. We appreciate you, DJ Nesh K. Yo, what's up? So, sir, we uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The new one, you Yes. You gonna perform it, Amma? No, 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 no. Just play it. And it says too. Play it for the peoples. No, but it has a dance. Guys need to learn. Yo, guys <laughs> need to learn this uh, dance. Apparently, we are going to dance. Uh, <laughs> Eve is still in the building. <laughs> Uh, so Eve is going to join us, uh, myself and Magic Mike, of course, and DJ Nesh K on the decks. Yeah. Tafadali, Tuma, your request. We're about to play Tuna by Magic Mike featuring DJ Ruff. Like any Tuma, about a request on Y254 channel. I'm at the East Circuit. So, yeah, let's go. I heard there was dancing.